Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. NURSA began hearings this week into ESCOM's applications to recover more than 66 billion rand in cost and sales variances for three of the five years covered by the recent tariff determination period. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss what this could mean for ESCOM and consumers. Hi Terence. Hi Shana. What is ESCOM applying for and why? Well, ESCOM's applying under the regulatory clearing account mechanism. So this is not a revenue or liable revenue application, which we're used to over, the, over many years. We see those applications coming in, and there's usually a big public hearing around that. And those applications for allowable revenue are forward-looking. So estimates and assumptions are made, and, uh, and then the, the nurse has to apply its mind to whether ESCOM is, uh, you know, is making fair assumptions and uh, and estimates, and then uh, gives them an allowable revenue, and then translates that into a tariff by looking at the sales volumes. So dividing that allowable revenue by the sales volumes, which gives them the cents per kilowatt hour, which is the tariff increase that we always get from April 1. And uh, what this mechanism is, the re regulatory clearing account, is because things are based on assumptions and it's forward looking, and we don't know the future perfectly, uh, sometimes ESCOM can over-recover and should give back to the consumer and uh, we haven't seen much of that <laughs> but uh, oftentimes ESCOM under-recovers and then goes and applies uh, to, to NURSA to recover either costs or sales variances during that period and that's what we're going through now. Now the, the issue here and why it's uh, such a big amount, 66 billion, 66.6 .6 billion is that ESCOM isn't only applying for one year. So, so these are big amounts, basically 20 billion rand over three years. And the last time we had a, clear, a regulatory clearing account application, um, well, we had two. It was uh, for the MYPD2 th period, where we covered all, all, the, all three years of that period, and ESCOM was given an increase. And then uh, for the first year of this current uh, um, MYPD3, which we now have moved beyond that, but it's the five years preceding 2018. And uh, that, that, uh, that was given to ESKIM for the first year uh, of that MYPD uh, period. But then there was a court ap application and it was taken to the High Court and the methodology was scrutinized and the High Court felt a nurse had applied that illegally. So there was then a period where no regulatory clearing account applications were heard. Um, and while ESKIM was submitting every year, so it submitted basically for 2014-15, 2015-16, and 2016-17. Um, so we still have one year outstanding of the MIPD last year. Um, it made all those submissions, but they weren't adjudicated. So now we're in a situation where we've had a Supreme Court of Appeal hearing and we've had a constitutional court uh, ruling, which basically says NURSA can go ahead and it wasn't illegal what they were doing. Um, and th that is what they've now started with these public hearings this week into this application, which really is based on uh, two real uh, components. One is the sales variance, which is the biggest component to ESKIM's application. And when ESKIM does the reconciliation, 67% of the 66 billion rand relates to the difference between the sales uh, volumes assumed uh, when the determination was made by, by NURSA in 2013 and the, uh, what actually occurred uh, during that period. And obviously we know that there's been a big variance and because that's the denominator, there would have been a higher tariff during that period, but because we had a higher number in the denominator, it was a lower tariff, so we had that, those five times 8% increases for the period. Uh, now Eskim is looking to, to claw back on that. And then obviously the, the usual suspects on the cost side come in on primary energy, IPP costs, um, open cycle gas turbines, and the environmental levy, which in this case, there would be some payback from Eskom and on all the other elements they're looking to claim. So it's a quite a technical process. And the reason why the number is so big, again, is because of the legal challenges. This comes at a time when society is extremely hostile to Eskom and to more tariff hikes. That's for sure. I mean, we saw last year's one year application by Eskom. It was sort of one way traffic. We had Eskom making the application for 19.9%. .9%. 
a large portion of that again was on the sales variances and they were talking about a rebasing there that was rejected by NERSA. And um, uh, that, that was uh, showed the hostility. And the hostility really arises around the feeling that it's not only been a lot of corruption at Eskom, but there actually hasn't been an efficiently run business. And that is coming up again in these current uh, round of hearings. You know, how can we trust Eskom? Uh, are these really prudently incurred costs? And in fact, you know, given the inefficiencies at Eskom, has the regulator really done its job in regulating an efficient utility over the period? And therefore, we must just dismiss this application out of hand. Now, now Eskom's argument, on the other hand, is that this is part of prudent and proper uh, regulation, that because you don't have a perfect crystal ball, there needs to be a mechanism that balances and recoups costs or over-recovery, either in favour of the consumer or, or, in, or in this case, in, in terms of the, it will go in favour of the utility. And without that, you would have a utility that would make very, very conservative uh, projections around sales and all sorts of uh, capital as well as, as operational costs and uh, primary energy costs and therefore you'd get a much higher tariff up front. So without that mechanism to rebalance, we'd have hu very big risks. Now, the analogy is what we see in the fuel price sector where um, that has sort of been totally depoliticized. So the fuel price is regulated, but because we have a, a monthly adjustment that's announced by the Department of Energy and those, those changes come in monthly, we don't have these price shocks. So, in the, but in a regulated environment, uh, what happens, are if well it should be happening annually where we do these adjustments and these recoveries or an over recovery paybacks, under recoveries get uh, further payments through the, from the consumer. But because we've had this long now delay, legal delay, that's why we're seeing such a step change. And if this were to uh, happen, it would be a major step change, something like 30% in one year. What is the likely outcome? Well, the likely outcome is definitely not 30% in one year. The outcome, um, I think, um, because we're in this hostile environment, I think NERSA, again, will be pushing back as hard as possible against Eskom. But it also knows that Eskom's taking, for the first time, has decided to take NERSA's determination for 2018-19 on review, on a legal review. We haven't seen the details yet about how Eskom's approaching it. They, they seem to be wanting to have a, a discussion with the nurse around that review and trying to get something uh, sort of out, a settlement outside of court. I don't think that's really possible in terms of the, the regulatory rules, but we'll have to see how that pans out. So there's definitely a pushback from Eskom uh, against the, the latest decision. And Eskom's going to hold firm, I think, on its ground that, the, that it is uh, due, these, uh, these recoveries. On the sale variances, I think they're very much going to say, look, uh, the, uh, when the 8% a year decision was made, we gave a sales forecast projection. Um, we also gave a revised sales forecast projection during those hearings, which was far lower. But NERSA, in its it became a NERSA decision to accept the higher sales, which benefited the, the consumer for that period because the, the tariff increase on a cents per kilowatt uh, basis was lower for that period than it would have been if we had had a lower sales uh, forecast. And uh, then on the other costs, there'll be lots of haggling around RPP and our coal costs, whether they're prudently incurred and whether Eskom is due them and whether it doesn't also include some of the load shedding, whether they're going to try and recover costs during the load shedding. Eskom says that is ring-fenced clearly and they, sh they have the calculations to show why that is not included because load shedding was a big feature of this period, especially 2015 year. So there's going to be, I think, quite a robust engagement. I think society is going to go back to the issues of corruption, mismanagement, and inefficiency at Eskom. And whether that is really part of the regulatory clearing account mechanism, yes, there's a prudency aspect to it. It's not clear to me, but that doesn't seem technically a competent argument. So the technically competent arguments are going to have to really be based on the formula. But uh, NERSA has shown that it is uh, able to, you know, to also look at the formula in, in a very uh, liquid way. So it's going to be interesting to see where this all, uh, uh, all comes out in the wash. But I think ultimately even Eskim is saying there's no way uh, society can bear a big 30% hike in one year. 
this will have to be uh, liquidated over uh, several years. And their suggestion, and I don't know how nurse will respond to that, is that whatever comes through sh should be liquidated over f uh, four, five, six, even seven years, and therefore the additional increase to any other hikes, because you must remember we still have to have another MYPD4 application later this year for to know what the next um, trajectory is from April 1 next year, and depending how long the application is for, I think Eskom will resist going for another five-year application given what we've seen in the MYPD3 period, but we'll have to see for what period they submit. But for, you know, over that period of MYPD4, there will be an additional amount that caters for the, the regulatory clearing account uh, rebalancing. So uh, it's not easy to answer what will happen, but I think Eskom uh, is fairly confident that it is due something, and society is fairly hostile to uh, Eskom getting anything and the regulator, as usual, is caught in the middle. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.